share for today is coming from Psalms 27, verses 13 through 14, from the New King, King James Version of the Bible. And it reads, I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. This morning as you take your seats, if you would just repeat with me my subject on today, the manifested goodness of God. The manifested goodness of God. Not just talking about it, <laughs> but experiencing his goodness for myself. <laughs> Hallelujah. I just want to thank Bishop and First Lady for this opportunity to be before you this morning. Hallelujah. You can have your seats. I just want to thank um, my family. Y'all, it's a blessing when your two sisters are your best friend. Hallelujah. It makes a difference because they see you when you're good, when you're bad, and when you're ugly. And they still love you and don't hold anything against you. I thank you for Joshua. I thank you for Joy. I thank God for my kids. Hallelujah. And then I thank God for each and every one of you. I bless the name of the Lord for the word that he has given me on this morning. And I pray that you would be blessed as well. It's like God said, all of this that you have been through was God getting us ready to see his manifested goodness. As you look back over your life and say, all of this was just getting me ready for his goodness. I know it hasn't felt like it, and I know it may not feel like it. But I'm here to tell you it was to get us ready for his manifested goodness. It is believed that Psalm 27 was written in moments in David's life where he was going through a hard time. Scholars say that Psalm 27 was written when he was fleeing from Saul, who was jealous of David and wanted to kill him. Ever, ever had anybody that was jealous of you just because of you was too little, too big, too short, too dark, too light, just for no reason? But they want David, um, Saul wanted to kill David. So in Psalms 27, verses 1 through 3, David lays out the reasons he should be confident and trust in God's protection. He says in verse 1 that the Lord is his light and salvation. So why should he fear and of whom should he be afraid? Even when the wicked comes up against him, David said they stumbled and they fell. David is saying that even though an army or a war may rise up against him, he would remain confident. David is speaking forth praises to God and his confidence in him. Then David moves to verses 4 through 6. And the scene changes just a little bit from the encampment of an enemy to the house of the Lord. David's desire is to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of his life. He knows that in a time of trouble that God will hide him in his secret place or his tabernacle. So David offers praises to God. He offers sacrifices of joy, for he believes that God is his protection. But then we move to verses 7 through 12. David shifts his tone, and he's pleading with God to turn his face toward him and to rescue him from his enemies. David moves from praising God to pleading with God. David is pleading with the Lord to hear his cry, 
to have mercy upon him and to answer him. He's pleading with the Lord not to leave him or to turn away from him. David said when his father and mother forsake him, he knew that God would take care of him. So David finally asked the Lord to teach him his ways and leave him, lead him in a smooth path and not deliver him to his adversaries. David appears to be moving from a place of anxiety to a place of speaking what he wants God to do for him. It's as though David is experiencing human anxiety and responding by praising God expressing uncertainty, reminding himself of God's goodness and protection, and then ending Psalms 27 with the praise. David sounds like us. We know we believe God, so we praise him. But doubt and life creeps in, and we're uncertain. Then we have to remind ourselves of his goodness and of the Lord, and we praise him again. David is showing us a cycle that we go through all the time, could be daily or over a course of time, but most, if not all of us, go through this cycle. David ends Psalm 27 and 13 and 14 telling us that after all he had been through, he would have lost heart. He would have fainted. He would have lost hope had he not believed. He encourages us to wait on the Lord and to be of good courage, for he is confident that he would and we will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living if we wait on the Lord. The Bible tells us that God's goodness and mercy follows us all the days of our lives. So goodness is following you. So it may not always be up on you, but it's coming because it's following you. So goodness will manifest in your life. God showed me an invisible timeline over our lives. He said, Ellen, there's the now, there's the wait, and then there's God's goodness. I may be in a situation that's causing me anxiety or I'm at the point of being miserable like David was. Yet David still had hope because he knew that God's goodness was on his heels and soon to come and rescue him. David is proof that we're going to go through. But David encourages, encourages us as we go through. Here in Psalm 27, David is encouraging us in the now so that we can see God's manifested goodness in the future. So here I go. You know, I have to question God. You got to break it down to me, make me understand, because all of this sounds good, but what does it mean? So I said, God, what is your manifested goodness? God said, good is what I am. It's who I am. It's one of my attributes. Good is a benefit or an advantage to someone or something. My goodness is my grace, my mercy, my righteousness, my loving kindness, my thoughtfulness, my consideration towards you. And the list goes on and on and on. Manifested is to show goodness, is to clearly see God moving in our lives through signs and wonders. Y'all, I'm excited about the manifested goodness of the Lord. Hallelujah. Because we always say, say that we're going to see the goodness of the Lord. Well, I don't want to wait to see the goodness of the Lord. I want to experience the goodness of the Lord in my life today. So when he said the manifested goodness, and I know that means that I'm going to see it now. I got all excited, y'all, but I'm going to slow down so I can get to what I'm supposed to be saying. What I know for sure is that David understood that we needed the manifested goodness of God for us to keep going, for us to keep moving. Because we have so many issues and things that we have going on in our lives. If we don't have something to hope for, we'll just give up. And I'm telling you, I've had so many problems and troubles in my life. If I didn't have something to look forward to, I would have just said, Lord, take me on. But now I know. 
I can walk in his manifested presence, and I don't have to wait until I get to heaven. Hallelujah. I said, I, I saw direction that David left us in Psalms 27, verses 13 through 14. He said, the first thing that we have to do is believe until God's goodness manifests. God is calling his people to trust him. His desire is that we would believe that it's going to happen, that he will fulfill his promises to us. What is believe? Believe means to accept as true, to have confidence in the truth, the existence or the reality of a thing. David said he would have fainted, he would have collapsed, he would have lost heart had he not believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, even in his current situations. I'm with David while I'm yet alive. While I'm here on planet earth, I shall see the goodness of the Lord. Excuse me. I believe that we are experiencing the goodness of the Lord in many of the things that he has promised us. Many of those things have manifested in our lives. But there is goodness that has not yet manifested. So we must still believe God's word. Remember Hebrews 11 and 1. It tells us now. Today, regardless of what's going on in your life, faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. I believe it, even though goodness had not, has not manifested in every area of my life, I still believe. Can you believe God right now for his goodness? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Has there ever been a time in your life when there was so much going on or so many things were going on that you felt overwhelmed, you felt defeated, and you just didn't know how you were going to make it? But then somebody gave you a word or you remembered a word and you had faith again. That was God's manifested goodness. Some of us have become dependent on receiving a word. Sometimes we need to believe the word that we already have versus always needing a word. We need to be the one giving other people a word who may not have as much word as we have, and they also need to be encouraged. Remember, when you drug yourself into the house of the Lord, now maybe that wasn't you, but it's, it's one of my stories. You drug yourself into the house of the Lord, because you believed if you could just make it in the house, things would be better. You heard that one word that it hit your spirit and it resuscitated you. That was God's goodness. That's how, why we have to be careful how we interact with each other. Because you don't know what we had to go through to get here. You don't know what I had to fight physically. You don't know what I had to fight mentally. You don't know what I had to fight spiritually to come into the house of the Lord. Remember that accident that you escaped? God's goodness. Remember when the doctor said it was a bad report. The doctor said death, but Jesus said life. That was God's goodness. Remember when you tried to kill yourself, but God wouldn't let you die. That was God's goodness. Remember when you thought you was at the end of your rope and there was no way out, but someone showed up and gave you exactly what you needed. That was God's goodness. The examples are too many to name. I just want us to understand that God's manifested goodness is all around us and it's moving in our lives at all. It's moving in our lives all the time. We must raise our expectations of God. We have reduced God to be like man. Come through sometimes, but not all the time. God is not a man, so he does not lie. He is not human, so he does not change his mind. He has never spoken and failed to act. He has never promised and not carried it through. God's goodness is there, though you may not see it yet. Man may be you for today, 
and against you tomorrow. Man may show me love sometimes, but with God, it's a guarantee that he loves us all the time. David had faith that God was going to rescue him. Although he could not see it yet, in the midst of his present troubles, he believed it was done. His faith was what was keeping him standing. We have to believe God until we see his manifested goodness. The second thing David is showing us, we have to wait until God's goodness manifests. So you got to believe, then you got to wait. Wait means to remain in place in readiness or expectation of something. We're not just sitting around doing nothing. We are watching with anticipation. We are ready for the move of God. When God says today is the day, those who have been patiently waiting will be ready. God said many of us are waiting on him and he is waiting on us. He is waiting on us to believe his word. He is waiting on us to speak those things as not as they, they already, as though they already were. He's waiting on us to get ready. The wait is not just us being idle. The wait is staying prayed up so I can hear what God is saying. In the wait, I'm reading his word so I can get direction. I'm fasting so I can hear and see clearly what God is saying and doing. Many of us have been waiting on the Lord to move on our behalf. We've been patiently waiting. At least some of us have been patiently waiting. At least some of you have been patiently waiting. Some of us have been in the wait. But we've been kicking and screaming and fighting against the process that has already been put in place. Our process was put in motion long before we even knew it was happening. Jeremiah tells us that God knew us before we were in our mother's womb. So I hate to break it to you like God broke it to me, but God is the one who's in control. So we don't have to fight. Because we already have the victory in it. Hallelujah. Fighting against the process, all it does is prolong the wait. Let's be clear. God is in the process with us. But we must believe that he is there. Some of us are in the weight of our lives. And we feel like, God, if you don't come soon, I'm not going to make it. David said, wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he will strengthen your heart. God will strengthen our heart. God will sustain us in the wait. We must wait on God until we see his manifested goodness. We got to have faith in that space between the now and the wait. We have got to see God in the wait. We must believe God now, today. We must believe God in the way. Please understand that God is in our now, and he is the one who is causing the weight in the first place because he knows what we need and when we need it. One thing he said is sometimes you can't even handle what I have for you. So the reason we haven't seen it yet is because we can't handle what it is that God has for us. We can't handle a deeper revelation. We'll lose our mind. You can't handle a job that's paying more money. You'll forget to pay your tithes. You can't handle that new car. You'll ride with your head so high you won't even see the people that's on the street that's in need. So some of us can't handle the goodness of the Lord. So what is he saying? Or oh, there's a saying that they used to say. He may not come when you want him, <laughs> but he always come on time. Some of us need to reflect on what we've already been through. For some of us, the wait, it saved our lives. The wait spared us from shame and embarrassment and disappointment. I got this from Minister Denzel. Uh -huh. <laughs> The wait is where we first believe God. <laughs> the wait is where some of us came to God. It's where some of us accepted God in the wait. We got saved in the wait. 
I got delivered in the weight. <laughs> the weight allowed us to grow and mature. The weight allowed us to get ready for the call that God had on our lives. The weight is what kept us because we believed God was going to rescue us from what we was going through. I had to say, thank you, God, for the weight. See, some of y'all may not understand the weight. That means you've probably never been through anything. But if you've ever been through anything in your life, <laughs> and you didn't know how you was going to make it through, you didn't know when God was going to come, <laughs> you didn't know how he was going to move, all you knew, if you didn't hold on to that little shred of faith you had, <laughs> It would have all been over. So when God begins to tell me about weight, I get excited. Because <laughs> I know that it was not all in vain. Why should we wait? Because it's not going to happen until God says it's time. <laughs> we can't make it happen quicker. Because learning to wait allows us time to increase our faith in the Lord. Do you think we would trust God if we didn't have to wait? Abraham had to wait on the Lord. When God told him he would bless him and multiply his descendants, the weight increased Abraham's faith in God. Hebrews 6 and 15 tells us Abraham waited patiently and he received what God had promised. Joseph waited on the Lord. Joseph had a dream that his brothers would bow down to him. But before that happened, Joseph had to be sold by his brothers. Joseph had to go in a pit. He had to be put in prison. But Joseph saw the manifested goodness when he arrived in the palace. The Bible tells us that God was with Joseph all the way. He didn't just show him something and not fulfill it. God was with him in the pit. God was with him in the prison. And he was with him in the palace. God is always with us, even though we're going through. His goodness is still there. It's just a matter of time. But it's in that weight where the enemy tries to pull us apart. It's in that weight where the enemy tries to tell us that God don't love you. Well, let me tell you, God loves us. We are his children. He will never leave or forsake us. I found out that waiting is good as long as it's you waiting and not me. This word is to encourage you and me because we are all subject to have a wait. We have to have hope knowing that God is with us every step of the way. He is always there even when it doesn't feel like it. It's spiritual so you may not get a feeling. That's why you have to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that God is there with you. Biblically waiting is an active verb. Indicating to wait is to be aware through all the senses of what is occurring around you. And discerning the right time to do the next thing. You're not just doing. You're waiting. You're discerning. Psalms 37 and 7 tells us to be still in the presence of the Lord and wait patiently for him to act. The Bible tells us in Psalms 84 and 11 that the Lord will withhold no good thing from those who do what is right. Are we doing what is right? Are we living a life that's pleasing in the sight of God? then we can know that goodness is going to manifest in our lives. Finally, what do you do between the nail and the weight and his manifested goodness? David said, wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. And then he goes back to say, wait, I say, on the Lord. After we have believed, after we have waited, David took the time to remind us here in verse 14 to wait again. He didn't just say it once. He said it twice. 
I believe David said it twice to remind us the third thing we need to do is stay focused. Now, this may be the most difficult thing to stay focused. We got to stay focused until God's manifested goodness appears for us. Focus means to adapt to the prevailing level of light and become able to see clearly. Focus means to have this light shine in your eyes so brightly, but you still need to understand why you up here, what you doing, be able to read and not pass out of here. But I just want to make it real for you. I don't know how they do it every Sunday, but hallelujah. Focused in whatever the situation you find yourself in. When you're down, you got to be focused. When you up, you still got to be focused. All times we must focus on seeing the goodness of God because there are so many distractions that we can easily become distracted and lose focus. Please don't watch the news. You mess around and watch the news, you'll be so distracted. Oh, Lord, they got shot. They got killed. They got. It's like, oh, my God, what is going on in the world? Now, at this present time or moment, in this moment, when life is not going quite the way I thought it would go, now, when my money is funny, but my bills are still due, now, when I'm trying to hold on to what the word says, but it looks different than my present reality. In the now, I'm waiting, but my waiting don't always feel good. I still got to stay focused. I know what you said, Lord, but right now, I'm tired of waiting. The, the vision is getting blurry. And sometimes I have to remind myself why I'm even waiting anyway. Now, I got this from one of them young people. This life is lifing. And I don't know what to do. And when I heard one of them say it, I said, I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> I understand that. Just like David, he loved the Lord. He trusted the Lord. But he had to remind himself of God's goodness in the wait. We have to be of good courage. We have to allow God to strengthen our heart. We can't be depressed. We can't be downtrodden. We can't be wandering around like we have no hope and no future. When we are focused, we can accept God in the wait. You should be exhausted, I know I am, from fighting against the wait. But when you focus, you can see God carrying out his word in your life. God told me to tell us this morning, the wait is over. If you believe, if you believe it, it's over. Here I go again. I said, Lord, how do I know the wait is over? He said, because when you focus, things you didn't understand become clear. You begin to see me in all of my glory. You begin to see what I'm doing in your life. You begin to understand that in that dark moment, I was right there with you. You begin to understand that nothing will come or has come that will overtake you that I don't have the power to rescue you from. The wait is over. We can rejoice and be glad if we've been in a season of waiting. We can believe and be strengthened in the Lord. <laughs> David pulled himself together in verses 13 and 14 to encourage us. He said, after all I've been through, and I'm going through right now, yet I am confident that I would have lost heart, that I would have been in despair. 
that I would have lost hope had I not believed to see the goodness. But I waited on the Lord. I believed that he was going to come. I stayed focused on what God was doing in my life. And now the wait is over. I know David experienced the goodness of the Lord. For he invited us in Psalm 34 and 8. David said, taste and see that the Lord is good. <laughs> I believe David experienced the goodness of the Lord because he told us in Psalms 107 and 8. Oh, that men would give thanks to God for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he satisfied the longing soul and fills the hungry soul with goodness. David tells us in Psalms 145 and 5, I will meditate on the glorious splendor of your majesty. Men shall speak of the might of your awesome acts. And I will declare your greatness. They shall honor the memory of your great goodness and shall sing of your righteousness. Listen, God is good. He is worthy to be praised. He is our provider. He is our keeper. He is our comforter. He is our king. He is the great I am. He is everything we need him to be. Can't you see the manifested goodness of the Lord in your life? Hallelujah. Let me tell you, let me tell you. The manifested goodness. God said where you can move from living paycheck to paycheck to blessing to blessing. Y'all know, I, I wrote this and I said, I used to wait on my check. God corrected me. He said, excuse me, you would still be waiting if I hadn't corrected you. But God told me it's not about a paycheck. It's about having faith to believe that my source will provide my resources. My source will supply all my need and my wants according to his riches. Hallelujah. Not according to my riches, but according to his riches. We can be in the goodness of the Lord and focus on a land where we're not worried about surviving. But our focus is on living and carrying out God's purpose because we believe Romans 8 and 28, which tells us that all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. I don't know how it's going to happen, but I believe he's going to do it. It's not about the how anyway, but it's when he's going to do it in our lives. What I know is God's goodness follows me. God's goodness follows us. It's going to be upon us and it's going to overtake us. Hallelujah. My natural mind can't even receive what I'm saying. But my spirit is quickened because it's the truth and the truth shall make us free. I got excited when God told me the wait is over. Because I have some things that I've been waiting on, some longer than others. God told me that it was good to praise him for the end of the wait. But that was a premature praise for this word. Something premature is done before the proper time. It's done too early. The Bible tells us to always praise the Lord. But he was like, this word is not about the wait, Ellen. This word is about what comes after the wait. Remember the now, the wait, and the goodness of God? He says, stay focused. It's all for his manifested goodness. God wants us to get excited and praise him for his manifested goodness, not about the wait. Because it's like I'm over here experiencing the manifested goodness, and I'm too caught up in what happened 10 years ago. I'm too caught up in what happened five years ago. I'm caught up in what happened yesterday, and I can't really experience the goodness of the Lord today. So it's not about the wait. It's about experience the goodness of the Lord in our lives today. He wants us to know that all we have been through has not been in vain. Listen, everything that has happened in your life that you consider darkness 
God was there. You only see the light in the dark situation when you can see God in the darkness. God told me, he said, Ellen, we got to be like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego who refused to bow down and worship the gold image because they believed God would rescue them. As a result, they were bound and thrown into a fiery furnace that was seven times hotter than normal. The three of them were thrown, thrown in the fire. And when Nebuchadnezzar looked, the person who was there with them, he said it's it's a fourth person walking in the midst of the fire. Now, he was the person who had them thrown, thrown in the fire in the first place. And that's just like God. He will use somebody who set us up to cause us to see him. Sometimes God's goodness is all over us and all over our situations, but we can't see him for ourselves. We just got to believe. Sometimes God will send someone to remind you of his goodness. David is trying to encourage us, and he, God sent me to remind us to be thankful for the goodness of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God has seen every tear, every hurt, every pain, the disappointments, and everything we have gone through. I have gone through. You have gone through. We have gone through. We were just in a waiting state before his goodness manifested. I was being set up to receive God's goodness. He has not forgotten about you. He was making us ready to receive. You know how when you wait on something, you can appreciate it more? If you had received everything you wanted without believing, without waiting, without staying focused, we would have thought we did it ourselves and that we didn't need God. But when you've had to wait for a little while, when you've been without your joy for a little while, when you didn't know how you was going to make it for a little while. When your joy comes back, you can be excited about it. Because you had an opportunity to be without your joy. When you've been without your happiness. When things happen in your life that cause you to feel sad and depressed. When you've been there for a little while and when God rescued you, you can be thankful unto God for thinking about you. The manifested goodness is the reason that Jesus came. He came to give us an abundant life. Everything that I need for my spirit, for my soul, and for my body. I'm not talking about eternal life in heaven. Although if you confess the Lord as your Savior, that would be his goodness at the highest level here on earth. But I'm talking about Jesus said he came to give us life, and he came to give us life more abundantly. In John 10 and 10, more abundantly means a higher quality of life here on earth. It's experiencing the manifested goodness of God. It's the season of the manifested goodness. It's the season of abundance. Not only believing it, but seeing it manifest and taking hold of it. And some of us, some of you, because I believe, some of you still may not believe. And we have to pray and say, Lord, help my unbelief. Because I want to believe. I want to see what you see. I want to experience what you have for me. You know, I was really touched by the session that we had a couple of weeks ago, and one of the questions was, what would you tell, I believe it said, your 17-year-old self? Can't remember exactly. And I said to myself sitting right over there, I said, I would have told my 17-year-old self, you're not going to make it. Because of what I had been through by the time I got to 17. You are not going to make it. But I can stand here today and tell you 
It don't matter what you've been through. <laughs> it don't matter when you went through it. What matters is that God has his hand on you. He is going to see you through. You are going to get exactly to the place that God wants you to be. You just got to stay focused on what you're doing. Focus on where you're going. And I didn't have anybody to tell me to stay focused. I had people praying for me, but I didn't know what I was doing. You know, I'm experiencing some things in my life that I've never experienced before, and I'm excited about God. My sisters laughed at me because I finally made it to Paris. It was on my bucket list. I get to Paris, we in the room, and I start crying. I said, Mama, we made it, Mama, we made it. They was like, girl, please don't depress us. <laughs> it wasn't about being depressing. It was about my mama didn't live to see how God has blessed me. I know she prayed for me, but she didn't live to see the goodness of the Lord over my life. And in that moment, I, I just said, Mama, we're in Paris, Mama. Because <laughs> I was excited about what God is doing. So if you don't believe, Ask God to help your unbelief. We have to shift our mindset. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 23 and 7, For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Allow the Lord to strengthen your heart and think on this. Think on it. I'm living in abundance. <laughs> think on it. I'm walking in abundance. Think on it. <laughs> I'm praising an abundance. Abundance is everywhere. It's all around me. Make a confession. I am rich spiritually. I am rich physically. I am the head and not the tail. I am the lender and not the borrower. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I serve a God who supplies all of my needs. Your goodness follows me, God. Your goodness is upon us, God. Your goodness is overtaking us, God. Believe until God's goodness manifests. Wait until God's goodness manifests. And stay focused until God's goodness manifests. Come on. Let's really praise God for his manifested goodness. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless him, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. Hallelujah. As I said, this was the word of encouragement just to encourage us, keep going, keep moving, it's coming. <laughs> Hallelujah. Romans 8 and 32 says, Since he did not spare even his own son, but gave him for us all, gave him up for us all, won't he also give us everything else? In other words, God has already shown his goodness towards us. He has already demonstrated his love towards us in the biggest way possible by giving his only son to die for our sins. While we were yet sinners, that's the thing. While I was yet in my sin, he died for me. He continued to shower his blessings down upon us. I cannot take hold of the abundant life of the manifested goodness if I have never confessed Jesus as my Savior. If that's your story today, if you don't know God as your personal Savior, say, excuse me, I want to receive God's goodness of eternal life and come to this altar. Squeeze on by whoever you need to squeeze by because hopefully they have theirs. But if this is that moment where if you're not sure, 
whether you're going to see the manifested goodness of God, I need you to come to this altar. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, I believe that once you really save, you say, but I'm telling you, I got saved when I was 13. When I, when I was in my 20s, somebody asked me, are you really saved? And I was like, I don't know. And I went back to the altar. And I knew then I was really saved. So if you don't know that you really saved, come to the altar. Hallelujah. All are saved. Let's praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If you have found yourself in this life not understanding that you were either in a place of believing or waiting and fighting against the weight and you know that you've been out of focus because you found yourself angry, you found yourself disappointed, you've been confused, you've been sad, feeling unworthy, stressed out, and you said to yourself and God, I know this is not the way life is supposed to be. I know this is not the way my wife, my life is supposed to be. I know this is not the way my marriage is supposed to be. This is not the job that you have prepared for me. Lord, I want my abundance, your manifested goodness. Come to the altar. We're going to stand in agreement with you and pray. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Are there others? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We bless your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And since there's just one, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father God, I come before you and I thank you for the opportunity to deliver this word, Lord. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for your son. I thank you for David, Lord Jesus, who took the time to encourage our spirits. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that maybe some didn't come to the altar, but they were touched by this word. At least I pray. And I pray that right in their seats, Lord God, that you would quicken it in their hearts, that you would give them a sign that you are moving on their behalf. You would give them a sign, Lord, that the wait is over. You would give them a sign, Lord Jesus, that they are walking in the manifest the goodness of you. I thank you and I praise you and I lift up your name. And I pray, Lord God, that you would watch over us and keep us and help us to stand strong, knowing, oh God, that your goodness is following us. Your goodness is overtaking us. And your goodness shall be with us all the days of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Verses 23 to 28. 
For I receive from the Lord what I also pass on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So whoever eats the bread or drinks of the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the blood and the body of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink of the cup. Praise the Lord. Can we, uh, before we receive Pastor Teresa for communion prayer, can we stretch our hands to Pastor Ellen and pray hallelujah for that mighty word, amen, that we received on today about the manifested goodness of God. Father, we come on today giving you glory, giving you honor, giving you praise. We thank you, Lord God, that your daughter was obedient to the assignment. And we thank you, Lord God, that the word she preached, oh God, touched our hearts and fell on good ground. Now, Father, pour back into her all that she has poured out on today. Oh God, we pray for an overflow of your anointing, an overflow of your spirit on your daughter. We thank you and we glorify you in the mighty name of Jesus. This is our prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to ask Pastor Teresa to come and bless uh, the elements and then we will move further into our communion service. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for this time. God, we thank you, God, for your body and your blood, God, that you shed for us, God. Lord, as we take part of it in part today, God, Lord, I ask, God, that you would wash us and cleanse us, Lord, God. Lord, forgive us, God, if there's anything that we've done, God, before we take your body and your blood, God. And Lord, I ask, God, that when we take it, God, Lord, God, that you would heal, deliver, and set free, God. Lord, whatever we stand in the need of, God, Lord, let it be in your blood, God. Lord, let it be in your body because it was already broken for us God so we thank you today God for another opportunity God to do this in remembrance of you in Jesus name we pray amen amen at this time we're going to um, have the ushers direct you amen as you come forward to get the communion elements amen
we reflect on the sacrifice that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ made for us at Calvary, let us also remember his instructions at the Last Supper. On the same night that Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat, do this in remembrance of me. So now we take this wafer, which represents the body of Jesus that was broken for us. Let us break it together and eat. After the same manner, Jesus took the cup saying, this is the new covenant in my blood. And as often as you drink it, do so in remembrance of me. Now let us take this cup, which represents the blood that was shed for the remission of our sins. The blood that was shed to cleanse us from unrighteousness. The blood that was shed to save our souls. Let us take it and drink together. You have renewed your covenant. Amen. To God be the glory. prepare for the benediction. Amen. We're going to ask Pastor Ellen to come and dismiss us. Amen. We praise God for what she's done today and the word that she's given. Amen. Hallelujah. I pray that all hearts and minds are clear. I bless God for the day. Hallelujah. Let's give him one more round of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Woo. Father, we bless your name. We thank you for your goodness, Lord Jesus. We pray that even as we leave this place, we will never leave your presence. We pray that you will watch over our bishop, watch over our first lady. Lord, we pray that you will give them safe travels. We pray, Lord God, that they will find things better when they get home than when they left. Now, God, I pray that each one of us will go forth and have a wonderful day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And we thank you, Lord. Oh!